They say that the bulk of the aircraft present today are based on designs from 50 years ago. The stringent aviation regulations have hindered exploration of out-of-the-box ideas, geometries and technologies. We have utilized pre-existing design templates of aircraft time and again and only tinkered with them slightly for efficiency improvement. This pattern exists for both airliners and light aircraft. But with the emergence of electric aviation, the market has been disrupted and the possibility of exploring new designs has arisen. In this video, we are going to look at three aircraft wing technologies that are being investigated with possible application in electric aircraft. On this channel, Electric Aviation, we aim to bring for you all the latest developments from the world of sustainable air travel. Subscribe to get all of our updates. The first type of wing we are going to have a look at is the fan wing. This was brought forward by Patrick Peebles, a US born inventor and the technical director of the fan wing project. The fan wing combines the benefits of both fixed and rotary wing aircraft. Among its advantages are very good stability, reduced fuel consumption and ultra short takeoff and landing capabilities. The fan wing is essentially a cross flow fan that is mounted horizontally on top of a supporting wing structure. As the cross flow fan rotates, inside of the fan a trapped vortex develops which in addition to forward thrust creates a major part of the lift for the aircraft. So just like the ornithopter, both thrust and lift are generated by the wings. Owing to its high lifting efficiency, studies have concluded that a mere 74 kilowatts could lift 2,600 kilograms of weight. The advantage of this type of wing is its low forward speed and lower maneuverability because of gyroscopic effects of the rotating fan. However, even with its reduced speeds, it has several potential applications. For example, high volume agricultural crop dusting, firefighting, short range cargo transport and civilian air tourism. The research on the fan wing is still ongoing. In 2016, a consortium of five organizations was made which included Fan Wing Limited, Von Karman Institute, Purdue University and two institutes from Germany. And the fan wing was given a more neutral name, Open Fan Wing Concept. Although the fan wing is simple to construct, it has complexity because of several additional design parameters compared to fixed wings. For example, the aspect ratio of the fan blades, the pitch of the blades and the RPM are additional elements that need to be optimized based on mission requirements. The scaling laws for fan wing also require further investigation, especially for the existence and integrity of the vortex inside the cross flow fan. Research over time has revealed that the addition of an outboard tail recovers energy from the wingtip vortices to significantly increase the overall efficiency. This in turn allows even lower minimum forward speed. Now the advantages of having distributed propulsion have been widely publicized. These include shorter takeoff distances, higher thrust during takeoff and energy economy. In a fan wing, the flow over the fixed wing is as distributed as it can get. The table shown summarizes the advantages of the fan wing aircraft compared to both rotary and fixed wing aircraft. Notice the high takeoff lift coefficient of 4.3 to 5.7 for the fan wing. Now, as of March 2021, only unmanned prototypes with fan wing have flown. A two-seater prototype is in the works that could propel this concept into the mainstream. The manned prototype will have to have a 12.8 meter wingspan with an estimated empty weight of 300 kilograms that will be powered up by two 37 kilowatt motors driving either side of the fan wing. A rotor speed of 1500 RPM will be required and its takeoff distance is expected to be just 15 meters. Interestingly, tandem fan wing configuration is also being explored which has shown 30% higher lift generation compared to two separate non-interacting fan wings of similar diameter. The synergy between the tandem fan wings depends greatly on the relative location 
to each other and allows greater flexibility in balancing between the required lift and the thrust as compared to a single fan wing configuration. The large wings fan requirements are also reduced by using tandem fan wings. Note that even though they are similar looking, the fan wing is different to the cyclogyro. The lift in the latter is only produced by the Magnus effect, while in the former, a fixed wing at the bottom provides the lift. We will cover the cyclogyros in a separate video as they are also significant with respect to eVTOL aircraft. Both these wing systems, namely the cyclogyro and the fan wing, have been around for more than 60 years. It's only recently that the technology has allowed the concepts to be revisited. And there is one other wing type from the past that can create a difference in the new generation of eVTOL aircraft. It is the X-Wing, but not the one from Star Wars. The concept for the X-Wing emerged in the mid-1970s and was demonstrated in the Sikorsky's compound aircraft, the S-72 RSRA. The X-Wing is basically four rigid rotor blades that are mounted on the top of an aircraft just like a helicopter, but they are stopped mid-flight after the vertical takeoff and transition to the forward flight is achieved. Once the rigid rotors are stopped, the cross-section of the blades is made to change such that they become forward-facing airfoil. The X-shaped aerofoil wings provide additional lift and allows the normal fixed wings to be of smaller size. The X-Wing also combines the benefits of rotor and fixed wing aircraft, that is, it allows hover and maneuver at low speeds while also cruising at high speeds. At the time when the X-Wing concept was publicized, the technology held a lot of promise. Even military jets using X-Wing were envisaged. Although the demonstration aircraft for the X-Wing, the S-72 RSRA, was able to overcome many of the technical challenges, the project was shut down in 1988 due to budgetary constraints. The disloading during the vertical ascent for this aircraft was estimated to be only 59 kilograms per square meter. By comparison, Lydium Jet has a disc loading of around 350 kilograms per square meter. Thus, the X-Wing allows for a much higher hovering efficiency. In the demonstrator, the shape of the rigid rotor blade was changed into a forward-facing airfoil by pushing compressed air through the blade. At present, there are technologies that can allow the airfoil shape change with much simpler techniques such as by the use of distributed compliance mechanism or by the macro composite fiber, MFC. The latter uses piezoelectric rods sandwiched between adhesives and polyamide film that actuates by an electrical stimulus. So with new technology at hand, it makes all the more sense to revisit the X-Wing concept, particularly when eVTOL aircraft are being pursued with great interest. The third type of wing that we will cover in this video is the truss brace wing. It is well understood that the aspect ratio of the wing has a huge bearing on the power consumption and in turn flight economy. That is why we see gliders having long and narrow wings. The aspect ratio of the wing is the ratio of the wingspan to the mean cord length. Having high aspect ratio wings even for a small airliner is challenging because the narrower wings require longer length, which brings with it structural integrity challenges. NASA, after rigorous research and testing, were able to develop a 52 meter span wing for narrow body fuselage plane that allows flying higher and faster, up to Mach 0.8 like current jetliners. This wing can reach aspect ratio values of up to 27, whereas conventional wings have ratios of 8 to 10. To strengthen the wings, bracing is added underneath the wing that also connects to the fuselage. Now compared to cantilevered wings, the fuel burn in truss braced wings is expected to reduce by 8 to 10 percent. The folding mechanism that has proven itself in aircraft like the Boeing 777 is also necessary for the truss brace wings. This would allow the aircraft to dock into gates meant for airplanes like Boeing 737 that have a 36 meter wingspan. Boeing will also be testing the truss brace wing 
on a modified MD-80, which will be a hybrid electric aircraft. If the flight demonstration in 2023 is successful, the technology would be ready for implementation in the year 2030 to 2035. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.